Hello guys, the Fantastic Z here. Today I'm here with a camera tutorial vid, and we have three cameras here, each from level one to level three. Now, don't be mistaken, uh, just because they have levels doesn't mean they're superior to each other. Or I mean, like, level three I wouldn't say is superior to level one, or superior to every other method of make using and making cameras. However, camera one does have less control than camera two and camera three. These are more so levels of control you have over each variable. But before we go to level one, let's discuss the usual method of using camera work in Moon Animator 2. Now usually they'll grab the camera We'll have it set as C frame. And for this purpose, we'll be going around the house in a full circle motion. And we'll be doing this for 120 frames about. So we'll have our front one set. And then I'll expand this just so that way it's easier to navigate here. And since we'll be going around the house, we'll copy this and paste it here. Then we'll go to the opposite end of the house. And then we'll paste or put another frame here. And then in the middle of this one, oh, whoops, we can just move out a little bit like so. Same for this one, we'll move a little bit out. You see that's one thing about frames from time, like if we go back here, then it goes around the other direction. So you'd have to in fact turn this way and then do the frame, at least for this specific case. However, it, it can be a little simpler and we could actually see what's happening. So instead, let's make a simple camera rig We'll group it together. It doesn't necessarily have to be a folder. I was actually going to make a model, but sure, why not? We'll have our camera here, or cam, since Moon tends to get confused if it has two things of the same name. And we'll have our root. Actually, are we able to have root parts? No, you can't have. So we do have to make it a model. And we'll put this in the cameras, and I'll call it level zero. Now we'll have our actual cam part. We'll grab the root first, then uh, control click that, and then we'll weld them together. We'll make the root invisible since we won't actually be animating it and make the primary part the root. So now let's grab our rig here and the camera and attach it to the part, which will make it a moon animator file. But before I actually mess with the camera, Let's first see a different method of using C-Frame if you wanted to. So let's select our house. Let's press F instead. And then we'll go to the front of the house or the front of this view. So this, is a, this isn't exactly the front. Then we'll move to frame 30. Neat. Then we'll move to frame 60. And then frame 90. And since we're going around the house, we'll just copy the first frame and paste it here. And now we've done the same thing. And since we're going around the same object, it's a lot smoother. And if we want to smooth it out a little bit more, we can move the C frame. We could determine where it's smoother by messing with it a little bit. I'll mess with it here until I have a good distance away from the house. 
like so. And now we have this. And then if we want to utilize the M function, we can. So now it will look a lot smoother than it did when we were just doing it manually, manually positioning it. But we still couldn't exactly see what those keyframes were doing. So now we'll use our level zero camera rig here. Neat, all right, let's convert that. And let's attach our part to the camera. And let's see where it's facing. Or we could actually see it here, it's facing the back and the house is in front. There we go, took me a bit. So let's grab our camera here and move it to the front of the house. Neat. And since I'm using increments, if you don't know how to use increments, you could go to gizmos and then use increment for these specific use cases. So let's see. Let's move our stud about 15 away from the house. And then when it's on the other side, which we'll do here at this frame, we'll move it 15 again. And then we'll rotate it 180 degrees. Neat. Now let's move them a little bit further. I think about 20 for both of those. And then we'll go to the middle here. Since it's facing this way, we'll also move it about, well, let's put it into the wall. And then let's move it again. I'll move it about 30. Neat. Then we'll do the same thing. We'll go to 120. And let's make sure it doesn't do one simple thing. Now, if we look at the motion, it's actually mirroring this motion. So it's going backwards instead of around the house the other way, which we don't want. So we'll rotate it 180 degrees. And then we'll move it outwards. So after we get it to over here where it's touching the wall, we'll move it 30 again, or depending on the use case, whatever is right. And let's actually see what the camera is doing. So it's moving sort of like a diamond shape, or if we look at it from this angle, it's moving like a square. So what we can do is we could grab this frame right here, this in between, and we can move it out a little bit just so that way it's not making quite the square. And you'll have to use your eye for this in order to make it as smooth as you can because it is moving in a straight line and you can really feel the straight line when you watch the animation play out and you can actually see what the camera is doing. It is moving in a straight line between these frames. So now let's see how the animation looks. Still a bit jagged. However, Moon does have a feature where if you press M, it will split the frames. So let's see how that looks. So this is the before of the animation, and when we press M, this is how the camera looks now. Still a bit jagged, so a lot of people will repeat this process. 
until it looks a little smoother. In this technique, uh, if my memory calls correctly, it was actually derived from a Team Fortress 2, or no, no, Source Filmmaker, I think, video animation tutorial. And let me show you the essence of that tutorial, what the frames are actually doing when you press M. So let's grab frame 5 here, or frame 10 and 20. So watch what happens. So this frame is right here, but when we delete that frame, it moves a bit closer to the house, and the straight line happens at a different section now. However, for this specific thing, I'd have to repeat this again and again and again and again until it's around the house. And I don't really want to do that for this you know, specific case of animation. So let's move on to the more specialized camera rig. Camera rig level one, which gives you a bit more control over how the camera rotates around its focus. So we have our focus here and the camera is connected to that. So if we rotate it, we'll see it's not moving in a square but actually in a circle. Interesting. So let's copy the position of our house. And since we have it parented to the root and the focus is directly under it, we'll be directly in the center of the house without having to move anything. So now let's move our cam outward and it will always face the focus unless we decide to turn it 180 degrees. And let's also grab our camera here. Neat. Now let us attach it to the camera right here. Oh wait, that's level zero again. <laughs> Hold on, I get confused for a moment. All right, let's grab that. And I wanna move it a little bit farther from the house. So now let's grab our focus. Let's copy it to 120. And then we'll rotate it 180 degrees like so. So now, oh wait, I didn't completely turn it 180 degrees. There we go. Let's remove the focus for now or turn off the attached part by clicking that little square. And it will do that weird thing again where it's going in reverse. So what we can do is we can grab it at this point and then rotate it like so. And now it should make a nice circle around the house, which it does. And let's see the result. Nice, that didn't take long at all, at least for this specific use case. You might not always want it to go around in a circle, and if you're instead going in a straight line from one end to the next, you probably won't need this rig. Now let's say you want to move the camera up and down. So now we want to offset the position of where our camera is looking. Oh wait, hold on. Let me just reposition the camera first. Whoops. So let me move this camera out of the way and now let's grab our level 2 camera where we can set the offsets. Nice. So let's make our rig animation attach to part here. And let's attach it to our level two cam. So now we have a few more parameters here. Not only do we have the focus where our camera is looking at, but we also have jump, which is color coded green, pierce, and 
Strife, which is, they're all color-coded, as you can see, blue for Pierce, green for Jump, and red for Strife, but you can also just name them, just so that way you know which one. Like, I know Strife would mean side to side for me, Pierce would mean, like, you know, piercing something, piercing through, and then jumping would be Jump. That's also self-explanatory for me. Neat. Okay, so now we have our parts here. And they're all connected to each other in different ways. So I'm still going to move out the camera like this at an equal distance until I like how it looks. Nice. Now we have our camera out. And then we'll grab our focus. We'll copy it to 120. And then our frame, frame 60. Will be 180 degrees. Like so. And then when it tries to go backwards, you can of course correct it. And now let's see what else we can do. So I want it to be more like an ellipsoid. I want it to be more shaped like an oval. So when it's over here, I want it to be a little bit closer to the house. So let's grab our pierce and I want to move it about 20 studs close to the house. Neat. So we'll grab this. And that. And let's remove focus for now and see what it's actually doing. It looks a bit too stiff. So I'm actually going to utilize an easing. I'm going to do an in easing. Or maybe an out easing would be better. And then in for this one. And then instead I can just copy it. See how it looks since they're the exact same. Or maybe I'll just go with the in and out method. I think that looks better. Now let's see how it looks with focus. Smooth. I could even add easings. So that's one use of being able to separate the parameters. You're able to have more control over how your movement can look. So now let's also do strife. Maybe I want it to move side to side. Maybe I want it to be a little bit subtle. So I'll move this, move it over here. And let's actually see how it looks. Linear, linearly first, now that I've mixed it in with some animation. You actually can't really notice it, so I don't think I will add easings to this, to the strife. Now, let's say you also want to add a little bit of a jump effect, like maybe right here. And you can do that. You can offset it upwards, and then maybe when it gets closer to the house, you want it to be maybe way lower, which you can do. So now I want it to jump like that, and let's see how it looks alone.
And I want to go a little bit bizarre with this one. Let's do a bounce effect. And I think I like how that looks. And then I'll go out. I think I'll go in out actually. And I'll probably do a little bit of a cubic. There we go. I think I like how that looks. And let's see how it looks with the rest. Now, if I don't really want it to go quite as low, like, hmm, or I want it to go a little bit lower, I can adjust it like that for the specific use case. And it won't affect with the focus, because it's its own little thing. You can see what each parameter is doing. You can see how it looks without it again. And if we ever want to mess with one thing, we can either do it separately or see how it looks together with it. You can get some pretty strange views. But you're able to just mess with it individually. And that's what I really like about these. So now we'll see the other parameters that you can affect. After I move our little camera back in place here next to the other ones. Nice and orderly, I'd say. So now we have this one. Not only do we have our positions here, but now if we go to Nod, we can see that we have one that goes like this, one that goes like this, and another that goes like this. So now, let's see the capabilities of this camera after I remember that I have to actually position it first, like always. Like so. And let's see how stylistic you can get with pretty much a good amount of ease and control compared to the other cameras. So we'll move it out like so. And then I'll narrow it down to 120 frames since that's the scope we're going for. We'll grab the camera we also need. And then I'll go ahead and attach it to our level three camera. Nice, okay. So now we'll do the oh-so-simple thing, and instead of doing focus, we'll just click on the spin modifier instead. So let's do that, 180 as always, and I actually forgot to move it to the front first, something like that, so press the G just so that way it's in the right position. And then I'll press G again. Once I actually have it in the thing, and then we'll try and do a backwards movement again. And we of course know the drill for that. We just move it 180 degrees. And now we have our movement here. And I do want to move it back a little bit. And since we do have more control, I also want to move the nod. So let's look down on the house a little bit, maybe a little bit less. Nice. I'll make this a bit smaller now that we have our basic thing here. Probably give more room for our screen to work with. Just so that we can better see what's going on. And I'll also move jump a little bit. 
knife in. Maybe I'll move Nod a little bit more. Neat. Let's see how the chimney looks. I'll move it here. Nice. And let's add a little bit of tilt to that. Maybe I'll move the knot a little bit down. Okay, how is it moving? I guess that's one odd thing about that. But anyways, it's pretty simple to adjust. And if you do want to add a little bit more dynamic to it, like for instance this tilt, I want it to move to the other side. So let's see how that looks actually when we remove the other factors. It's tilting this way, and if we add the nod, that's how it looks. Maybe I want it to tilt a little bit more at the end to closely resemble how the corner is sort of digging in here. So let's also do that, make it symmetrical. Nice. And let's say I also wanted to move down like this. And let's see how that looks with jump really quick too. I don't like the linear motion, so I'm also going to add an easing to it. Now it's pretty noticeable, but if we add our spin, it'll look pretty smooth. Neat. All right, let's remove the spin again. And I do want it to be a little bit higher here, just so we can see more of the house still. And how does a linear jump look with a eased nod? Let's take a look at Nod again. Wait, I wasn't moving Nod. <laughs> huh. Did I move something else then? Something is not adding up. Or did I only move the tilt? Give me a moment to process what I just did. Hmm. I guess I didn't mess with Nod, did I? No, I definitely did mess with Nod, I think. Did I not mess with Nod? I am confusing myself right now. Let's remove Nod really quick. Did I accidentally move tilt like that? Hold on. I did. Well, okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. It would be cool if Moon did add a... What is it, a feature? To where you could... Um, how do I put it? To where if you wanted to, you could lock movement for certain things. I think that would be a neat update, but yeah, it's more of a niche thing, so it doesn't really have to be implemented. Well, anyways, let's add that movement back. I guess that's one thing you can get confused with. Neat, all right. And let's add that movement back to the nod and actually the nod this time. Neat, okay. Let's add our easings. Neat, and now we have our little thing. Okay, I guess that's why it kind of looked odd to me when I saw it like that. Because the tilt was moving at the same time as the nod. So now we have that. And then if we wanted to, we could move our jump a little bit. We can move our jump up like that. And then move it up if we want to see, have it a little bit centered. 
And then I think I'll have a soft in and out again. And maybe I'll have a more harsh one for the nod. Or perhaps I'll want to add a bounce to this. Pretty interesting. You can do a lot with this. You can even add an, a bit of an, an elastic one. Interesting. And let's we'll see how that looks with our spin. And let's add it, uh, let's make it a loop. Oh, that's right, I added the tilt so, so it won't actually make a, a proper loop. It's more like A to B because yeah, the, the tilt is like completely throw that off, so never mind. You'd have to do it twice in a row to make it an actual loop for this case. But yeah, look at that. We made something, or yeah, we made something pretty interesting here. And let's say I also want to move just for this specific one. I can if I want to, you know, see more of the house, perhaps. And that 60 will have the intrusive thing right here. Or let's say I wanted to go further at this point but wanted to you know keep it around this distance from the house neat so now if we move remove the spin we can see what it's actually doing and if we remove it from the attachment we can actually see the way the camera is moving pretty interesting and we can obviously see the results here. You have control over pretty much every part of and every variable of the camera. And you can even add a little bit of shake if you wanted to by utilizing the focus if you wanted to. However, I mostly use the focus actually to switch between or move to different subjects. So let's say you have character one here and character two here, and you wanted to switch between the two. That's what I'd mainly use focus for. So if I wanted to add a shake modifier, I'd probably just add another part here to use as another variable for my shake. And you could probably add that really anywhere since it's only shaking and moving the camera. So you wouldn't really have to worry about its position, only if it's jointed to the camera or not. Something like that. But since we have this case, maybe I'll just make it so that way it shakes between like 45 and 75. And let's make that happen. So yeah, every 0.1 frames, I'll make it shake a little bit for no reason. We can do that. Though preferably, I'd probably add just another modifier to that. But anyways, this is the amount of control you have over, well, the whole camera system here. So I could just grab this. Uh, then I could, you know, copy this. Put it at like 180. Like so. And now we should have a loop. Something like that. We can definitely add a lot of personality to this if we wanted to. And if I see that I want to make a little bit of an adjustment, since it is a loop, I can just copy this frame and paste it to the 
other frames that I want adjusted. And I also want to edit this one, for instance. I want to see more of the grass here. So then I can. But then I also want to zoom out more, which I can also do by moving the pierce one. So now I can do that easily without having to change the entire thing. So even adjustments are really convenient with this whole amount of control I have over each individual parameter I set. So this is actually my, I think, third take on this. And I do have an example animation that I did like a few days ago. So I'll move on to that recording. I'll probably maybe repeat a few different things I've already mentioned, but it will be for a more cinematic purpose, and you'll see how I use the focus a little bit differently in this one. And now we have this. Neat. We have all our little cameras right here that we can mess with as we please. So in my case, I prefer to do you know, the camera work lasts when I, whenever I animate. So now we'll have Thundy right here and our little character. Now I'm still not too good at Blender exporting. So uh, I've had a lot of technical difficulties like whatever is happening here. But this is where the third camera really comes into play here. And I'll show you. So let's grab the focus, and instead we're going to make it focus on, you know, our character here. For now we'll be running pants. This is what the actual animation would have looked like. I mean, still, still pretty scuffed, but... I mean, at least the torso was attached to the, to the body. This... I really don't know what went wrong here, unfortunately, so uh, that'll be for future me to figure out. But we're going to have the camera focus on the pants here. <laughs> and then about, let's say, a second before the animation ends. What frame is this? Let me just remove all that. Maybe about a half second before the animation ends, the focus will move to Fundy. Something like that. So we'll move their, our little camera here. This will probably be the longest example, but I'll have time markers so you can skip a lot of things. I'm just saying that for future me, really. And the focus will be on Fundy here. And this is a pretty, it's moving at a pretty consistent speed, so I don't really have to worry about too many fluctuations. And I'll focus in on his head right here. Nice, okay. And now, if we... Man, I really wish I had double monitors here, that would be so convenient. But anyways... Uh, let's get our camera here and attach it to our level 3 camera. And let's see how this looks. <laughs> Alright, well let's spice things up a little bit here. So we'll grab my spin and I'll spin it this way just so we have a better grasp of what we're viewing here. Neat. Okay. Field of view. Let's, uh, I'll, I'll make it like cinematic 30 
or whatever. Like so. And then I want it to sort of like move to the front over over time. Like that. And I'll also have it. Yeah, you know, like this. And then it will kind of face more towards Fundy. But I do also want to add some movement. So I think I'll add, you know, something like this. I'll copy that C frame. And it moves about every 10 frames. We can get a little bit more wild, but I'll probably make it 20 frame movements or something like that. Probably starting 80 is when I'll have it change a bit more. So not in. So spin will still move at its usual rate. And what I want to do is, I'll have it, I'll have to nod, you know, move every, oh, whoops, 20 frames here. <laughs> Just some moving pants. You know, just giving a little bit more dynamic movement here. You know, that's a bit jarring actually. I'll probably just move it to every 20 frames or something like that. And then uh, the thing that fixes all, just, just random in and out. And then for the last one, I'll, I'll do in. Or no, no, for this one, I'll do in. Let's also get camera for here ready. Like everything will change once we reach here. But I'll plan that later because I need to focus on this. Maybe I can make it, you know, every 10 frames. Just give me a moment. Maybe if I add more dynamics to the spin or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I got an idea. Let's, let's, let's make it look really awesome or something. And then a little bit of softer movement here. And then more soft movement. And then more more ragged movement. And then a little bit. And a little bit more spin. And then some more spin this way. And then to make it smoother, in and out. And maybe just so that way this first one is a little bit less jarring.
Nod doesn't really have to have like a set path in how it moves. I'll probably make it move like down over here a little bit. Stay down there a little bit. It'll make it move up a bit. Yeah, look at that. Probably stick with something softer. Probably not so many frames. Let's simplify this a bit, actually. Let's make it linear. Then let's aim for a bit more of a jarring moment, not too many jarring moments, just enough to where it's like... So I'll do in and out. And then I think to sort of reflect, I guess, the speed at which it kind of feels like it's moving. We'll also utilize the offset too. And then in and out. Yeah, it's looking like Leo Miller right there. <laughs> I know, I know. It's very hard to take a, a pair of pants seriously. I understand, I understand. Probably make this tilt up a little bit more. Then for jump, let's also utilize Pierce a little bit, just to give the sense of like, this this guy's like running away from the cam or something like that, 
or or let's let's put the camera farther, you know, farther away from from our protagonist's pants here. And then let's say our, you know, our pants, the camera's trying to get a little bit ahead of it or something like that. Let's see where the strife is. Let's move back here. Let's also mess with tilt, actually. I think that's what's sort of missing in this scene. There we go. I don't know what Fundy wants to do with these pants, but we'll have to see what happens. It doesn't all need easy, and it can be a little bit jarring with some of the frames if you want. Though I think I will uh, make this one at least some sort of in and out easing. <laughs> so let's just take a look at the pants frame we've got. Oh gosh, everyone's going to be so confused when I send this out of context. I'm, I'm going to send it out of context first, and it'll just be like, camera tutorial coming soon. I swear, if someone does mention Leo, Leo Miller, then I've, then I've done a good job with this tutorial, I think. Now let's also get the field of view. Let's see, how do we want the field of view to look here? I think I want it to go a little bit higher. And then I'll move the camera closer. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh, why, why is my character here? Let's remove him. Let's remove me. And then, and then, then we'll get all like close and personal with the pants here. You know, let's make it like. 90 field of view. Let's put that cam real close so we can see that movement. Yeah, yeah. You know what? In fact, let's go let's go max field of view. Just to really, really get in those pants, okay? You know, let's let's get the the foot view, just so that way we can see, you know, the, the foot here. You know, like a, like AOT type frame. All right, that's what I'm aiming for. Neat, neat, neat. All right, there we go. And then over here, 
the the field of view will go to like 60 or something like that. What was it supposed to be over here? Yeah, we have 120. No more, no less. And then the last frame, let, let's work on the last frame. Okay, okay. Uh, everything but focus will be reset here. And then the nod, the nod here. Yeah, yeah, like that. Okay. And, and then Thundy will be like that. And then the field of view will be, you know, max that, which means we'll have to get even closer and more personal. Yeah, yeah, a little, a little less nod, I think. All right, let's see that. Okay, I think the, the strife or the cam, I don't know which one. I don't know, let's just add a little easing to that too. You know, easings, easings fix everything, right? Make it prepare for like you know a little a little three sixty spin. And then, and then a sign out. Kinda comes out of nowhere. I think it has to like start here or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Though I do want the the actual spin to happen, you know, a little faster.
I'll probably make it like 25 and 31. Or you know what, I I'll make it happen a little later. Pierce, Pierce will go like camera will go like Pierce camera focus focus too. This will be the only time it goes like. Then jump. I think maybe jump can go like higher. Then it can go out. This can go in or in out. Let's just let's just make it all transparent and you know really really see how it looks. All right, hold on, hold on. There's something off. There's something off here. The pants. The pants. All right. Yeah, we have to fix the pants. You know, I only I only really need this to be untransparent. We need to fix the pants. Okay. There we go, there we go. The final boss was funny the whole time. You know what? I'm gonna choose a funnier angle. And you know what? Emphasis on like, on like the, the lollipop thing he has in his mouth. Well, anyways, that's about it. If you like this, this if you want to try out this camera, uh, please, please ping me when you use it. I want to see what fun animations you make with it or something. <laughs>